Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail Ethan Allen, one of America's first heroes. entitled Night Raiders, a true story of Colonel Ethan Allen, who led his Green Mountain Boys on the first offensive of the Revolution 177 years ago. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, you young men who graduated from high school in the class of 52, listen to this. There's a real opportunity for you in the expanding United States Army, and you can continue your education, too. You see, the Army gives its soldiers the finest technical training in the world. Today's many soldiers go to excellent schools where they learn to do a job and do it right. What's more, in the Army, you can even get a college degree through USAFI, the United States Armed Forces Institute. And because our Army is expanding so rapidly, promotions come fast. Remember, there's lots of room at the top. You'll lead an interesting, healthy life, too, and work side by side with other intelligent young Americans. So if you think you can fill a man's shoes, why not visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out what the Army has to offer you. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Night Raiders. At the southernmost tip of Lake Champlain, you'll still find the walls, the crumbled battlements, the barrack foundations of the old fort, Fort Ticonderoga. Its site has been restored, its remains preserved to remind us of another day, another time, when men sought to be free. For you to stand by night on Ticonderoga's silent parade ground, the breeze might play tricks with your ears, bringing you echoes of sounds long gone, and in the darkness, you might think you saw shapes and figures moving towards you through the dust of time. Post number one, 11 o'clock in old twelve. Post number two, 11 o'clock in old twelve. House number three, 11 o'clock in the old place, middle of nowhere, wilderness. Horribly dull, sir. Uh, quite, quite. Eleven o'clock and all is well. I've been commander of this cursed fort, felt them longer than I can remember, and always, ever and always, all's well. A man from officer in his majesty's army, a man expects to fight, see action, be of service, but here, <laughs> what does he see here, Feldham? Sees a lake, sir, forests, mountains, wilderness, Savages, red and white. Rot. Exactly, sir. Rot. Sir, do you, do you think perhaps this mob who dared attack His Majesty's troops at that place whose silly name I can never remember, uh, do you think, sir, perhaps it might become a war of sorts? Feldham, don't talk like a blasted fool. Attack His Majesty's troops at uh, Lexington, Concord. Authorities will hang their leaders, arrest go home and behave. I never saw such people. Uh, frightfully odd, sir. No respect at all for their betters. Exactly so, exactly so. No courage either. Run to the first sign of a volley. No, no fighting, no war here, Lieutenant. Nothing but incredible boredom. Get him 
Crown Tavern in Bennington, Vermont, some 50 miles to the south of Fort Ticonderoga, was just as wild and ferocious as its title proclaimed. Here on an early May night in 1775, a swarm of grizzled backwoodsmen were engaged in the notable Green Mountain custom of drinking stone walls, a mild concoction of rum and hard cider, and calmly and quietly discussing what they could do to further aid and abet their Massachusetts brethren in their revolt against His Majesty's authority. I say, cleave them! Cleave them all, I say! Cleave them! Quiet! Quiet before I lose my temper! Leave them! If you don't stay shut, I'll stuff you into that barrel. Now, oh. <laughs> ain't that a sight better? We came here to figure out how we can help our brethren on Massachusetts Bay. Yeah! Yeah! Not, not to argue ourselves hoarse. Now, us Green Mountain boys can meander on down to this Cambridge place, or we can march for Hartford in the Connecticut colony. <laughs> There ain't no fighting down to Connecticut, is there? No, so far as I've heard, Ephraim, but... Well, let's go where there is some fighting. I'm spoiling! Yeah. 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 I can see that from here. Yeah. You look like a hog that's been left in the sun for long. Yeah. All right, quiet now. Yeah. Now, I got another idea. I think it's prime. In thinking on between stone balls. <laughs> Ticonderoga! That's my idea. You mean the fort, Ethan? I don't mean the moves, Stephen. We get hold of that fort, and we can stop anything coming down to Champlain from Canada. We can even use it to go on up the lake to Canada. And that in all, there's a mount of powder and guns to be had. And we need them, like we need the help of the Almighty. How many soldiers they got there? I don't know, but we can find that out. Well, how to strike you? I say cleave Morning, Ethan. <clears throat> Morning, Stephen. And we find a prime. I'm hungry as a bear in springtime. <laughs> Ain't thirsty, are you? <laughs> that was a real set to, huh? Going up the river and take old Ty away from the Britishers. Ain't it peculiar what the light of day will do to an elegant idea like that? Appears just as good to me in the sunlight as it did in your tap room. You, you mean you're really set on it? You, you wasn't just... No, what do you take me for? Ever heard the time Ethan Allen got a plan and didn't carry it through, plumb to the finish? You ever? No, Ethan, no. Ain't a soul in the Grants don't know your man of your word, but, uh, Ticonderoga, British soldiers, cannon. I ain't asking anybody to come along who hasn't got a mind to it. I didn't mean that. Well, what did you mean? I, uh, I guess I don't rightly know. But I'll tell you one thing, Ethan. If you're set to take this fort, then I'll close up the catamount and come along with you. Well. I'd certainly be obliged, Stephen, if you did. Huh? Now let's see what you got to eat for a starving man, huh? <laughs> Levi, I want you and Sam and Noah Stephen, to... Stephen! Ryder coming up the trail in a hurry! Uh, maybe news, huh? Maybe the Massachusetts boys licked him again. Say... Ain't that your brother, Heman? Well, by the... Heman! Heman, lad! Oh, oh, oh. Hey, morning, Ethan. Morning, boys. I got news. Good news. All the way from Hartford. We give him another licking? Oh, oh, boy. Easy, easy there. Ah, he's dry as a bone and half-winded. No, no, we didn't give him another licking yet. But we're sure going to. Ethan, I brung the authority from the committee in Hartford for us to attack the tag on the road. Well, if that ain't real neighborly now. I hardly get the idea, and I got the word to go ahead and give it a try. The delegation's not far behind me. They're bringing 300 pounds in hard money to buy provisions and for pay. I'm a man who likes to see things going on. 
Levi, Sam, Noah, you know what to do. Get your horses and ride. I want all the boys in these parts here by sundown. We are going on a big wolf hunt. They said of Ethan Allen, he was a man tall enough to talk to pines, a man born to lead. By sundown that evening, the catamount was filled with Green Mountain boys and volunteers who had come in with a delegation from Hartford. Well, Colonel Allen, that takes care of the official business. We have the necessary papers and the necessary cash. I'm at your command. Mr. Mott, Colonel Easton, Captain Phelps, as you can hear from the tap room, the boys are anxious to start moving. Bennington and the Catamount is no place for us to set up a headquarters. I say we head north to Castleton. We'll pick up a lot more boys on the way, and when we get there, we'll only be 20 miles from the fort. An excellent idea, Colonel Allen. You gentlemen agree? Fine, fine. <laughs> then, gentlemen, let's drink on it. <laughs> and to it. The long, straggling column of men in buckskin left Bennington by dawnlight. At Arlington, the column grew larger as plows were left and firelocks shouldered. At Dorset, Paulet, Pulteney, powder horns were filled, bullets molded, and the column continued to grow steadily as it moved northward. We're going on a big wolf hunt, roared Ethan Allen, and the men came running. On May 8th at Castleton, a council of war was held. Ethan Allen was chosen to lead the attack on Ticonderoga, but first, boats must be gathered to cross the lake, and just as importantly, a scout must be sent into the fort to find out its strength. Now then, what are you doing nosing around here? Get your hands off me! <laughs> Why, look who's giving the orders. I'll get... What the devil's going on here? Well, speak up, Corporal. Oh, sir, I, I caught him snooping, I did, sir. Who are you, fella? What are you doing here? Name's Noah Phelps. I'm a trapper from up Boss Abel Way. Been in the woods all winter. Here to tell a man could get a shave at Ty, so I come in to get me one. Mm. You could use a bath, too. Ain't interested. Just want to get a shave, and this big monkey monkey... That'll do. He... Corporal, just where did you find this uh, fella snooping? Well, sir, he was, he was acting suspicious-like, poking his ruddy nose about. Looking for a barber, you fancy-pants lobster back? That will do, sir. Who let you in here, anyway? Soldiers on the gate, they was gentle. Fella, are you a king's man? <laughs> king's man? I ain't nobody's man. I'm a trapper, and I heard you got a barber here. Now, do, do I get a shave or don't I? Hold your tongue, you insolent rogue. You happen to be talking to an officer in his majesty's <laughs> Hold your tongue, you, you insolent rogue, he said. <laughs> I knew you died trying to keep from laughing. <laughs> Sounds like you almost got a closer shave than you expected, huh? So there's a breach in the south wall. No, uh, we're beholden to you. Uh, it's worth nothing, Ethan. Had a fine time. What's this I hear tell about Gershon Beach, blacksmith? Well, Gershon took a little run for himself. I sent him out to call in the boys from the north. He covered 60 miles in less than 24 hours. Dude, tell. Man can tire himself out running around like that. <laughs> Through the night of May 9th, Green Mountain boys from the north came pouring in to swell the army, which had now settled itself at Hands Cove near Shoreham. All was in readiness, and 200 men waited impatiently for the boat parties to arrive, which were to carry them across the lake on Ethan Allen's big wolf hunt at Fort Ticonderoga. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Night Raiders. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Here's a special message to the high school class of 52. The United States Army, the senior service, needs bright young men, men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you can fill the bill, the Army will send you to one of its many fine technical schools. For the Army trains its men in such interesting, exciting fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, and many, many others. You'll not only get the finest training in the world, 
but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform. And today, there are plenty of chances for a man to get ahead. For your army is growing fast, and bright young men can grow with it. But why not get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you? Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant and learn all the details. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Night Raiders. The minutes and then the hours of the all too short night sped away. Still, there was no sign of the boats. The men grew restive, their leader enraged, and then suddenly, to add fuel to the fire, a stranger dressed in a colorful uniform came riding into their midst and announced that he had been sent to lead them in battle. It makes no difference to me whether you come here with the authority or not. I'm running this out. That's fine. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. We ain't moving an inch without even the leaders. Quiet, quiet, Palladio. Colonel Arnold, whatever your name is, I think you can follow the track of our sentiments. I care neither for your sentiments nor these wild men who follow them. Then you'd best get back on your horse and ride on out of here. I'll do no such thing. I was empowered by the Connecticut Committee to take command of this expedition. My orders supersede the arrangements you and Mr. Mott made. I am your superior officer, and I order you... I, I think even you, Colonel Arnold, can see how it is. Now, you boys, just control your tempers. If anyone's going to lose that temper around here, it's me! We've all been making enough noise to let... Every Britisher from here to Cambridge know what we're about. Another hour and... There's two boats coming up the lake. It's about time. Nearly dawn. Colonel Arnold, if you want to come along on this wolf hunt, that's all right. You can come along with me. But keep your official papers and your orders to yourself. <laughs> boats, even though they were scows, couldn't carry 200 men across the lake, but somehow, with gunnels awash and Champlain chopped up by a north wind, 83 of the little army managed to reach the western side of the lake. Dawn was already erasing the darkness from the sky. There was no time to lose. Easton, have the men formed in three ranks. I don't want to hear a peep out of any one of you. Colonel Allen, I demand to lead the attack. By the old have you understand I'm in command here. With one more sound and I'll get put on the guard. Boys, you have any time to waste. We're going up and take old Ty away from the Britishers. Not a one of you, but ain't worth five of them. And I'm proud to be the leader. This is an undertaking which none but the bravest of men would dare to undertake. So well, let's get to undertaking it before daylight catches us. Forward march! History tells us that the attacking party was armed with rifles, pistols, fowling pieces, blunderbusses, clubs, and hunting knives. With Ethan Allen striding along at their head and Colonel Benedict Arnold fuming close behind. They moved quietly past the redoubt, skirted the east wall, and came to the south curtain where, as Noah Phelps had reported, there was a breach. Without halting, their leader drew his sword, climbed over the tumbled masonry, and charged forward. Forward, men! Forward! Rouse! Rouse the fort! Ethan, look out! Look out! Now then, you! Water! Order for the love of your quarter enough. Take me to your commander before I unhinge your head. Yes, sir. Follow me, sir. The, 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 the officer's billet thought right up them stairs. Seth, take care of this man. The rest of you follow me. Come out of there, you. Come out of that. Quiet. Quiet. Well, sir, 
Did you lose your pants? What is the meaning of this infernal racket? Yeah! <laughs> Silence! Now, sir, you were saying? I was saying, by what authority have you to enter His Majesty's Hawk? In the name of the great Jehovah and the Continental Congress. In the name... Who are you people? And who... By the Eternal, I shall have possession of this fort and all the effects of George III. And if you don't comply, not one of your men shall be left alive in this place. I am Lieutenant Feltham of His Majesty's 26th Regiment of Foot. And I take leave to inform you, sir, whoever the devil you are, that I am not in command here. Then, you pantsless figure of a lieutenant, take me to your commander at once. Yeah! And so, with much shouting and firing of guns and general pandemonium, but without loss of life on either side, Ethan Allen and his band took possession of Fort Ticonderoga. What had started out as a desperate venture turned into a mad holiday when the commander's keys uncovered a cellar containing 90 gallons of rum. By noon the next day, the entire countryside on both sides of the lake had assembled within the fort to celebrate in typical New England style. Would you mind closing your window? It's spreading headache. Yes, sir. Uh, there it's better. There's a frightful noise. Savages. Quite. Uh, what do you suppose they plan to do with us, sir? Uh, burn us at the stake, perhaps eat us. I uh, don't really know. I, I don't quite understand them, sir. No respect for authority at all. I have to hang the lot of them. Uh, true, true. Unforgivable. This is loud, Alan. Hang him highest of all. Uh, Continental Congress, sir. Uh, Captain, what is that? Uh, I haven't the vaguest left. And I would appreciate it greatly if you'd stop asking me so many asinine questions. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. It's quite all right. What have they done with the men? Much of them? Uh, not so far, sir. I believe they are all being held in the East Barracks. I suppose it's only a matter of time before these wild men set fire to it. How many of the garrison were lost when these barbarians attacked? None, sir, so far as I know. None. Did you say none, Lieutenant Fulton? Beastly, isn't it, sir? Seems the lads were overpowered before they had a chance to rouse out. Oh, bad show, bad show. Oh, you mustn't take it so hard, sir. Good day, sirs. I trust you've been treated well. If you mean, sir, we haven't been set upon by your howling mob, quite right. <laughs> well, our Captain, you you wouldn't begrudge the boys a bit of celebration. Especially on your <laughs> rum. <gasps> but my, my, my rum, how, how dare you? you? You're not only a pillager of king's property, but a thief as well. Calm yourself, Captain. I'll see that you're repaid for it. <laughs> That's a jolly laugh. <laughs> if I... If I may be so bold, sir, uh, what do you have in store for us? Uh, you may be so bold, Lieutenant. Incidentally, you uh, look much better with your pants on. <laughs> well, you're going on a trip to Connecticut. To where? Connecticut. I'm sure you've heard of it, Captain. It lies to the south of Massachusetts. Couldn't we hang just as well here? Or whatever it is you're planning for? Hang us? you? Hang you, gentlemen? Oh, I wouldn't think of it. You'll be held as ransom for some of our friends in Boston. Now, enough of this talk. You'll be leaving in an hour. You'd best get your things together. Mordecai, you and Nat come in here. <laughs> Don't, uh, don't really understand it. You're no, not surprised, Lieutenant. Connecticut, I, I believe I've heard of it. Do you suppose the people are as wild and disrespectful there? Blasted, Felder, will you hold your tongue? What difference does it make what they are? They've been robbed, that's all I know. Uh, first take my fort and then my rum. Ninety blasted gallons, never see it again. Never get a penny for it. The thieves, the rabble, uh, hang a lot of them. <laughs> On May 12th, 
Colonel Ethan Allen sat down and wrote a letter to the Committee of War at Hartford, Connecticut. Sir, whereas the fortress of Ticonderoga has fallen into the hands of the colonies, together with the ordnance, stores, and so forth, and whereas Captain Delaplace has in the fort 90 gallons of rum of his own property, which is greatly wanted for the refreshments of the fatigued soldiery. This is therefore to desire the treasurer of the colony of Connecticut to pay him, the said William Delaplace, 18 pounds, 11 shillings and ninepence lawful money, as the rum is appropriated for the use of the garrison. Your compliance will oblige the garrison and your humble servant, Ethan Allen, Commandant of Ticonderoga. As you can imagine, but as Captain Delaplace couldn't, he was paid the stated amount. And so it was that the fort at Ticonderoga was taken by Ethan Allen and his Green Mountain Boys back in May of 1775. And were you to stand by night on Ticonderoga's silent parade ground, the breeze might play tricks with your ears, bringing you echoes of sounds long gone. Yeah! <laughs> I see Cleveland! Cleave the Ladabur! You young men who just graduated from high school, listen to this. The United States Army needs intelligent young men to handle the thousands of important jobs opening up in your growing army. If you can qualify and come within the quota, you'll be sent to one of the Army's many technical training schools to study such interesting subjects as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, or electronics. The Army teaches you the know-how it takes to get ahead faster. So men, don't worry about your future now that you've finished high school. You'll find the answer to that important question at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>